Um, it's October 11th. This is Stephen G. Erickson with Randy Sykes. Um, he's a Lyme disease a reformer. Uh, I say activists and people get, get scared sometimes, yeah. but, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, we've had uh, uh, people losing their houses. There's a friend of mine, uh, Mike Watkins. He had two restaurants he was running. He lost everything because he just got so bad. He was on his couch for like three months. His savings is gone. Everything's gone. So, and the insurance companies um, haven't come up to bat, and the uh, doctors haven't come up to bat? <clears throat> no, in fact, what happened with him is he lost his job, you know, he lost his income because he had two restaurants, and therefore couldn't pay for his health insurance. So he had to give up the health insurance, not even knowing what was wrong with him at the time. Um, have officials like uh, Governor uh, Jody Rell come up to bat to help out, to like expose it, and, and uh, when people go to her for help? No. I would say the only person that has really done anything for the Lyme community is Attorney General Richard Blumenthal. The politicians, uh, the whole, the, Connecticut's the insurance capital of the world, and the insurance companies don't like to pay for things, and the politicians don't like to upset the insurance companies. It's all about money. I mean, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that you've got Lyme disease. And I mean, the, the papers, we're picking up another 73 papers, uh, probably over the weekend I'll pick them up, showing chronic infection after long-term treatment, culturing spirochetes. It's, it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of I think or I don't think this is chronic. It's definitely chronic. Uh, what would happen to property values um, if people knew that entire families could be infected with Lyme <laughs> and, uh, you know, not much is being done? I mean, wouldn't people not want to move to Connecticut if they knew that, you know, your husband, wife, and children can, you know, a whole family can be stricken with Lyme? <laughs> And, and not even know it. We're looking to put some money together because that's an excellent point. We'd like to put up a billboard as you're entering Connecticut. Caution, entering Connecticut, highest per capita in Lyme disease. All right. Um, you have a sign over there. It's probably, that says, uh, reward, yeah. 20,000 proved Lyme cure. See details. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a $20,000 uh, $20, reward for? If any, well, right now, Yale and UConn, the IDSA, they're saying that Lyme is cured with I think it's between 14 to 21 days of antibiotics. Yep. So we're saying, fine, if you can prove it's cured with six weeks of antibiotics, we'll pay you 20 grand. The trick is, if they if they approach us and challenge us, they've got to give us 20 grand. If they can't prove it, papers are all over the place. They can't prove it. So this is really, you know, excuse my, it's really pissing these guys off because there's nothing they can do. Um, you have a website? Yeah. What is it? CTLymeDisease.org. And we've been trying to update with the stuff that's going to help the people. We want people to be able to go on there and find what they're looking for, you know, treatment failure. We've got a neat article on there off MSNBC News, a PDF file that the CDC was studying the following deadly pathogens, anthrax, tolaremia, Ebola, cholera, desert fever, and Lyme disease. Um, there's uh, some in the Lyme community that think that uh, Plum Island <coughs> um, off of Connecticut was a, um, a bioweapons research. <coughs> oh, it was, yeah. And uh, is that how Lyme possibly could have been uh, better. We had talked with a person who did work there, and they were doing outdoor mycoplasma experiments. Uh, we were told that they infected the ticks and let them on the island to experiment, and never dreamed that the seagulls that fly back and forth would take them with them. So they, um, in Africa in World War II, they had soft body ticks that were infected with uh, what is now called Lyme, mm. and they crossed it over to hard body ticks um, so they brought a tropi tropical disease from Africa, mm -hmm. um, and so the, so the was it military exp experiments, government experiments. What, 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 what? Well, the first the first part that you're talking about is called Operation Paperclip, where the Germans were working with. It wasn't called Lyme bacteria; it was called Borrelia. Yeah. And they were cross. They were working with that, and Operation Paperclip was when after World War II the German scientists were, you know, rather than killing them for war crimes, they brought them into our country, gave them high-ranking jobs, just like the Japanese. The Japanese that tortured the American soldiers, they were given high-paying jobs in this country rather than being punished for their crimes. Then they brought the uh, Borrelia and started experimenting with it. I have a paper here somewhere. I'm going to have to dig it up. In the 50s, you're familiar with the Tuskegee, Tuskegee experiment. Well, they, they allowed uh, uh, black men to be uh, well, families. Yeah. Um, uh, syphilis, or was it? Syphilis. In fact, you go into Tuskegee timeline. It goes right into the CDC's website, and they admit... When good, when good medicine goes bad. Yeah. That's what they call it. Now, I, the paper that I have, 
the uh, military was working on this project, and they were crossing the Borrelia with the syphilis bacteria. It wasn't called Lyme disease at that time. Yep. And they were crossing the Borrelia bacteria with the syphilis spirochete. Lyme disease and syphilis are cousins. And uh, what is what is it? Uh, arsenic can be used. You almost kill the patient in order to um, in order to kill the uh, spirochetes. I think I read an article where they were trying to kill. All, this is in the 1944, if I, if I remember right. They were working on killing off the Borrelia with arsenic, and they could not they could not kill the bacteria. There's an art. There's a published article. Uh, they took a petri dish. Filled it with rosef and ceftrioxin, that's an IV. Yep. And they put spirochetes in there. 30 days later, 50% of them were still swimming around and alive. So swimming around in the very stuff that's supposed to kill them. So they're pretty uh, pretty resilient. Oh, yeah. So if you're not treated right away with with uh, what what uh, what drug? Well, uh, Alan Barber published an article, if you do not start aggressive IV antibiotics within seven days of the onset of infection, they could not remove the, the Borrelia bacteria from the mice brains. They were doing mouse models, and they could not remove it. And if they treated it within seven days, they were okay. So um, uh, Lyme disease is not curable if it's not hit right away? According to their papers, yeah. Now, I don't, I don't think there's any cure for it once it sets in, yep. but I think the antibiotics will put it into remission. It'll beat it down. Uh -huh. And there's, there's, there's an article of uh, Dr. Shapiro said at Dr. Jones hearing that there was no you know, recorded documents of gestational Lyme, congenital Lyme. Yes. And we have a paper of a woman who was approximately three months pregnant, got bit by a tick, got a bullseye rash. They gave her, I believe it was a month, don't quote me, but I believe it was a month of penicillin. Yes. She felt fine. Six months later, the baby's born. 20, 23 and a half hours after birth, the baby goes into respiratory arrest. Couldn't save him. Yep. And they noticed a lump on the baby's head, a little a bump on the baby's soft spot of the head. Yep. They did an autopsy. There was a cyst on the brain loaded with spirochetes of Borrelia. The mother and the baby both tested seronegative. So if, you, if you're a mother, um, you could not have you know, not know that you have Lyme, and you could affect your children. Yeah. Um, the IV drugs are they extremely expensive? Maybe uh, it costs more to treat Lyme than it does AIDS. Is that is that fair? I think ceftrioxin could be between eight to twelve thousand dollars a month. That's, that's not. That's a good chunk of change. So the insurance companies aren't going to want to uh, pay for that. And the doctors that are in cahoots with uh, drug companies that have an ineffective drug, um, you know, if, if so they, they keep giving uh, drugs out that aren't working. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the trick. The pharmaceuticals, I'm wondering why the pharmaceuticals aren't out there pushing, saying, why don't you just give somebody that comes in with fatigue and symptoms in an, an endemic area, throw antibiotics at them for 30 days and see what happens. And I've been wondering why. Well, if you sit back, the pharmaceuticals can't lose. If you get treated right away with, say, 30 days of tetracycline, I think it's $15 a month. They're not going to make any money on that. But if you go six or eight months a year without treatment, and then they find out it's Lyme disease, you're on the antibiotic gravy train for quite a while. Or if they decide, if they call it MS instead, you're going to be taking heavy-duty chemo drugs and... Uh, and Lou Gehrig's, whatever they name it, whatever whatever they name your disease, you're going to be on the drug of the month club. So they can't lose. They hold off treating Lyme for a few months, and money rolls in. So to allow people to get sicker, large groups of people, um, the drug companies make money, and the doctors yeah. make money. Well, you look at the ads on, on TV today. All they're doing is pushing drugs. They're trying to tell people now that depression hurts. You know, when you're depressed, your body hurts. These people are loaded with bacteria. It's at an epidemic level, pandemic level. And <clears throat> we've helped, our group has helped 165 or 166 people diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And like I said before, every one of them had Lyme disease and or co-infections. All right. <clears throat> Have Lyme disease activists been targeted by police, the courts, etc.? <clears throat> I, w I don't know exactly about police, but I know some of them been ha have been really hassled. There's, there, was a, there was a national organization that was put through hell by a guy that worked at the National Institute of Health. Yes. They were, I mean, they were worked over. There was stuff you ever think, I'm not at liberty to talk about it, but they really put this family through hell. So um, there's a, a large amount of fear in speaking out. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You know, people have been harassed. Um, do you fear 
speaking out that you could lose your property um, and your your reputation? No, because uh, you know once they give you Lyme disease, what are they going to do to you? They're not going to shoot you. That's not going to hurt. They're going to put you out of your misery. You, know, you wake up, you're living in hell every day with this disease, and it's not even an afterthought what they do. What's a typical day like for you? Uh, get up in the morning. The way to describe it, you don't have Lyme disease, correct? No, I don't. Okay, the way to describe it is, if I woke up tomorrow and I was having a good day, and you felt like I did on that good day, you'd probably stay in bed. You probably wouldn't even get out of bed thinking you got the flu. But when you feel crappy all the time, when it eases up a little bit, the fatigue, you just, you just never, it's like Christmas, you just don't know what you're going to wake up to. Your knee can fill up with fluid, a headache, memory problems, you zonk out, you know, it's just... How about digestion? Well, the only thing I haven't had a problem with. Really? I put on about 25 pounds since I got Lyme disease. I used to run two and a half miles a day. I hit the police gym every morning and work out, exercise, bench pressing, leg presses. Um, I was told that um, people that, you know, drink moderately, um, once they get Lyme, um, they can no longer tolerate alcohol. Is that, is that something? That was one of the things. When I went to a doctor in Madison, well, first I left Leahy Clinic. I w I walked out of there with three days of testing, tick broken off in my shoulder, knee blown up, they aspirated my knee. I had every classic symptom of Lyme. Yep. They told me possible beginning stages of MS and leukemia, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. When I asked the doctor, I said, everything else I know, what the hell is fibromyalgia? Yep. He said, well, it's technical. So I, I demanded, I want an answer, I want to learn. Well, it's going to take a long time. When I demanded, he said, you, let, you should go to a psychiatrist. He can tell you what fibromyalgia is. <clears throat> it's just... You know, as you move on, I left there, and I went to a little doctor down in Madison who saved my life. I walked in there, and I was ready to die. That's how, I wanted to die. That's, I was just going to give up. That's how bad I was. Uh, how old were you then, and how old are you now? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, at that point, I forgot how to add. I could barely walk. I uh, couldn't sleep because I was constantly in pain. Um, I probably improved 50%. You know, I, on a good day, I can take the Harley out. Uh, you know, a good day I can do, you know, an hour's worth of something, but you just never know when you're going to be down. After organizing this protest, I'll be down for a week. Really? Yeah, we get, you know, a bunch of us have been working together, and it's a lot of work. Well, um, I'll see about posting uh, some videos if I get some from somebody else, because I, I doubt that I'll be able to uh, uh, make it. Um, but I'll post this as soon as I can, okay. and uh, thank you. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask... I, we've seen this going on, we've seen the line groups, and we've seen people, their lives being destroyed, and it's a conspiracy. It's just, it's ridiculous what's going on when the science is out there. We don't need any more junk science. And basically, like the old saying goes, if they knew what they were doing, it wouldn't be called research. But the question I have is, where is the line communities, where is your line in the sand? How much more are you going to take? People sit back, and they just don't respond. These people are stripping us of our dignity, taking our homes, foreclosing, or you're losing your job, you lose everything. You, you lose your friends because you're sick. Where is the line in the sand? When, we, when will the line community pull together, work as a team, and try to fight these people? We can't do it alone. We need people to start getting upset and, and respond. That, that's what I ask. All right. Hopefully the message gets out. Let's hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you think it did? Um, 